Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to share a quick story that happened to me recently. I was recently the victim of credit card theft. I didn't actually discover that I was a victim until I received notifications that over a thousand dollars had been charged to my card and my card and account was frozen. Needless to say, it was a pretty big inconvenience to the fun weekend I had planned. If you think it won't happen to you, think again. Hackers love to target places like video game companies, streaming services, and other commonly used websites. These companies are prime targets because they have a ton of customer data. They don't, however, have to adhere to the same security requirements and regulatory demands as hospitals or banks. So that's why I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. The thing that sold me on Aura was how it monitors the dark web for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers. If it finds them, it sends alerts fast right to your phone or email. When I first signed up to the service, I was given a massive reality check. Aura found over a dozen instances of my personal information on the dark web. It found my username and password available for hackers to try and steal my info. Aura also gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like someone else opening a loan or credit card in your name. They also have VPN services for safe anonymous browsing to keep potential hackers from stealing your info. Protect your family and yourself from identity theft by going to aura.com mtg or clicking my link in the description. And if you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two week free trial with my link. You can see for yourself how many times Aura finds you or your family members personal info on the dark web. A big thanks to Aura for sponsoring today's video. Playing with Power members Cal and Ryan are battling in another Mox Pearl game. They are joined by Charles and Garner and we will see how they do tonight. We would also love to play with you. If spots are available, join our Mox Pearl tier on Patreon and record a game to be on the channel. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Cal, piloting the partner pair of Malcolm Kenai Navigator and Tana the Bloodsower. This deck seeks to kill the table with Glenhorn Buccaneer and Malcolm, or Dualcaster Mage and Twin Flame. Cal's opening hand contains an Elvish Spirit Guide, Imperial Recruiter, Taiga, Tropical Island, Chrome Mox, Elvish Mystic, and an Arid Mesa. Next, we have Charles, piloting Heliod Suncrowned. This deck seeks to stack down the board before going with the combo with Walking Ballista. Charles' opening hand contains a Snow Covered Plains, Soul Ring, Manifold Key, Mana Vault, Thorn of Amethyst, Mask of Memory, and an Alciate of Life's Bounty. After that we have Garner, piloting Magda, Brazen Outlaw. This deck seeks to slow down the table before executing a game-winning combo with Clock of Omens and its commander. Garner's opening hand contains a Red Elemental Blast, Mana Crypt, Enslaved Dwarf, You Find Some Prisoners, Treasure Vault, and Two Mountains. Finally, we have Ryan, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Jessica, Thrice Reborn. This deck, called Mad Farm, seeks to cast Ad Nauseam as fast as possible. It then assembles infinite mana to burn out the table with Jessica. Ryan's opening hand contains an Imperial Recruiter, Dothy Voidwalker, Badlands, Loyal Apprentice, Godless Shrine, Grand Abolisher, and his London Mulligan is a dual caster mage. Without further ado, let's kick off this tremendously tumultuous, tasty, tantalizing tantric trial. Ryan wins the Doja Cat cosplay pageant and gets to start us off. Ryan draws a card for turn and plays a Godless Shrine into play tapped. He passes. Cal draws a card for turn and plays a Tropical Island. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Gamble. He exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He casts his commander, Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator. Cal ends his turn. Charles draws and plays a Snow-Covered Plains. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts a Manifold Key. He casts Mask of Memory. He activates Manifold Key, untapping his Mana Vault. He casts Thorn of Amethyst. The table sits there shocked at Charles' turn one play, and he gives the turn to Garner. Garner draws and plays a Mountain. He casts Enslaved Dwarf. He passes. Ryan draws and plays a Badlands. He casts Dothy Voidwalker. He ships the turn to Cal. Cal draws and plays a Taiga. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Malcolm. Ryan takes it, Malcolm triggers, and Cal creates a treasure. In his second main phase, Cal casts Ledger Shredder. He casts Elvish Mystic. Ledger Shredder triggers, Cal connives, discarding Red Elemental Blast into exile with a Void Counter through Dothy Voidwalker. Ledger Shredder gets the plus one plus one counter, and then Elvish Mystic resolves. Finished up, Cal passes. During his draw step, Charles takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He plays in Aganja, Seed of the Empire. He casts Alciate of Life's Bounty. He activates Manifold Key, untapping his Mana Vault. He casts his commander, Heliod Suncrown. Ledger Shredder triggers and Calcanides Arid Mesa into exile through Dothi. Charles equips Mask of Memory to Alciad and passes to Garner. Garner draws and plays a Mountain. He casts Dockside Extortionist. The table sinks their head in despair and Dockside resolves. Dockside triggers and in response, Cal cracks his treasure and adds a red. 
Then Garner creates eight treasures. He casts his commander, Magda, Brazen Outlaw. Ledger Shredder triggers and Kalkanize Veil of Summer into exile through Dothi, putting a counter on Ledger Shredder. Then Magda resolves. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Enslaved Dwarf. Magda triggers and Garner creates a treasure. Ryan takes it and in his second main phase, Garner activates Magda, sacrificing five treasures. He fetches up a cursed mirror onto the battlefield. It enters as a copy of Dockside, creating eight more treasures. He activates Magda, sacrificing five treasures, fetching up a universal automaton onto the battlefield. He activates Magda again, fetching up Clock of Omens onto the battlefield. He activates Clock of Omens, tapping Universal Automaton and Clock of Omens itself, targeting Universal Automaton. Since Automaton is a changeling and therefore a dwarf, Magda triggers and creates a treasure. Then Clock's ability resolves and Automaton untaps. He activates Clock again, this time using his newly created treasure and Automaton to untap Automaton. He presents a loop of tapping his treasures and Automaton to activate Clock, untapping Automaton, creating more and more treasures each time. Using this loop, he creates infinite tapped treasures. He activates Magda, sacrificing treasures and fetching up a Maskwood Nexus onto the battlefield, giving all of the creatures in his deck all creature types. He activates Magda, sacrificing treasures and fetching up Zorn onto the battlefield since Zorn is now a dragon through Maskwood. He presents the same loop as before, creating infinite tapped and untapped treasures through Zorn. He activates Magda, sacrificing treasures and fetches up a Spine of Ishsa onto the battlefield. It enters and destroys Thorn of Amethyst. He activates Magda, sacrificing treasures and fetches up a Bogard and Hellkite onto the battlefield. It enters and kills Dothi Woodwalker, Malcolm, and Elvish Mystic. He activates Magda, sacrificing treasures, and fetches up a Soul Guide Lantern onto the battlefield. It enters and exiles Dothi Voidwalker from Ryan's graveyard. Garner activates Magda, sacrificing treasures, and fetches up an Elixir of Immortality onto the battlefield. He sacrifices Soul Guide Lantern to draw a card. He activates Elixir of Immortality, shuffling it and his graveyard into his library, gaining 5 life. He now presents a loop of fetching both Soul Guide Lantern and Elixir through Magda, drawing a card through Lantern, shuffling it in through Elixir, and then fetching them up again. Using this loop, he can start drawing the cards in his deck. He draws until he finds Lightning Bolt. He casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Ryan. He then shuffles Lightning Bolt into his deck through his Lantern Elixir loop. He uses this loop of drawing Lightning Bolt, casting it, and shuffling it over and over again. He does this repeatedly until the table is dead and Garner wins the game. Okay, what an amazing display of Magda by Garner. So let's go again. In this game, Cal brings back Malcolm and Tana. In his opening hand contains an Elvish Spirit Guide, Chrome Mox, Simeon Spirit Guide, Red Elemental Blast, Ancient Tomb, Neoform, and a Mystic Remora. Next, we have Charles piloting Ao, the Dawn Sky. Ao? Ow? Ow? Ooh? Ow? I have no idea how to pronounce that. This is a mid-range deck seeking to disrupt the table with stacks pieces and assemble a Nim Death Mantle combo with its commander. Charles' opening hand contains an Astronaut's Altar, Arcane Signet, Ancient Tomb, Three Planes, and his London Mulligan is a Cavern of Souls. Garner brings back Magda, Brazen Outlaw, and his opening hand contains a Mountain, Mutavault, Dwarven Grunt, Bloodfire Dwarf, Jeweled Lotus, Memory Jar, and a Bogarden Hellkite. Ryan brings back Timna and Jessica, and his opening hand contains a Soul Ring, Mox Opal, Dothi Voidwalker, Badlands, Flooded Strand, Auriok Salvagers, and his London Mulligan is a Reign of Filth, and Cal gets to start us off. Cal draws and casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Neoform. He plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He casts a turn one, Mystic Remora. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Professional Facebreaker. The table sides at this amazing turn one play, and Cal passes the turn. Charles draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to help cast Arcane Signet. Remora triggers and Cal draws. Charles ends his turn. Garner draws and plays a Mountain. He casts a Dwarven Grunt. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. Remora triggers and Cal draws. He cracks his Lotus to help cast his commander, Magda, Brazen Outlaw. Garner ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Badlands. He casts a Soul Ring. Remora triggers and Cal draws. Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Cal lets his Remora die, seeing as it, you know, drew him three cards. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Professional Facebreaker. Ryan takes it, Facebreaker triggers, and Cal creates a treasure. In his second main phase, Cal taps his Ancient Doom to help cast his commander, Malcolm, Keen Eyed Navigator. He exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He casts Spell Sky. Cal gives the turn to Charles. Charles draws and plays a snow-covered plains. He taps his Ancient Doom to help cast Karn, the Great Creator. The table sighs, and Karn resolves. Charles activates Karn's first ability, turning Cal's Chrome Mox into a creature, killing it. Charles ends his turn. Garner draws and plays a Mutavault. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Magda and Dwarven Grunt. Magda triggers twice and creates two treasures. Ryan takes it, and Garner passes the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts Dothy Voidwalker. Ryan passes. Cal draws and moves to combat. He attacks Karn with Facebreaker and Ryan with Malcolm. Karn and Ryan take it, Malcolm and Facebreaker trigger, and Cal creates two treasures. 
In his second main phase, Cal activates Facebreaker, sacrificing a treasure, and exiling Muddle the Mixture off of the top of his library. He activates Facebreaker again, exiling Jeweled Lotus. He casts Jeweled Lotus from exile. Finished up, Cal ends his turn. Charles draws and plays a snow-covered plains. He activates Karn's first ability, targeting Garner's treasure, killing it. He taps his Ancient Doom to help cast his commander, Owl, the Dawn Sky. Charles passes to Garner. At the end of Charles' turn, Garner flashes in high-speed hoverbike. It enters and taps down Charles' AO. The turn moves to Garner. Garner draws and casts Bloodfire Dwarf. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Magda and Dwarven Grunt. Magda triggers and creates two treasures. Ryan takes it and Garner passes the turn. Ryan draws and casts a Mox Opal. He passes. Cal draws and moves to combat. He attacks Karn with Facebreaker and Ryan with Malcolm. Ryan and Karn take it, Malcolm and Facebreaker trigger, and Cal creates two treasures. In his second main phase, Cal activates Facebreaker twice, sacrificing his treasures. He exiles Toski, Bearer of Secrets, and exiles Arid Mesa. He plays an Arid Mesa from exile. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a volcanic island onto the battlefield. All finished up, Cal passes. Charles draws and plays a snow-covered plains. He activates Karn's first ability, targeting Garner's treasure, killing it. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Uwu. Ryan takes it, and Charles passes the turn. Garner draws and activates Mutavolt, turning it into a creature. He taps it for mana, triggering Magda, creating a treasure. He casts a Soul Ring. Garner moves to combat. He declares he intends to attack Ryan and Cal with his creatures. Ryan implores with the table that they really need to get Karn off of the battlefield since it's stopping everyone's strategy. No one else wants to attack Karn since it frees everyone else up to immediately attempt to win. So instead, they want to wait until the opportune time. Ryan attempts to reason with them that Charles will run away with the game if they take that approach. Unfortunately, no one agrees with Ryan, and Garner attacks Cal with Dwarven Grunt and Bloodfire Dwarf and Ryan with Magda. Magda triggers and creates three treasures. Cal blocks Bloodfire Dwarf with Spellskite, and they all take the rest. Finished up, Garner passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and moves to combat. He attacks Karn with Dothy Voidwalker. Karn takes it, and in his second main phase, Ryan casts Lion's Eye Diamond. Ryan passes. Cal draws and plays a Taiga. He moves to combat and attacks Charles with Facebreaker and Garner with Malcolm. Both take it, Malcolm and Facebreaker trigger, and Cal creates two treasures. In a second main phase, Cal pays two life and taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Birthing Pod. Cal ends his turn. At the end of Cal's turn, Charles casts Enlightened Tuner, fetching up a Grasp of Fate onto the top of his library. Charles draws and plays a Snow-Covered Plains. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Grasp of Fate. It enters and targets Magda, Dothy, and Malcolm. In response, Garner activates Magda, sacrificing five treasures, and fetches up an Ancient Copper Dragon onto the battlefield. Then the three are exiled, with Malcolm and Magda moving to the Command Zone. Next, Charles casts Ashnod's Altar. Everyone suddenly realizes that they are in big trouble, and Altar resolves. Charles sacrifices Al to Altar, moving it to the Command Zone, adding two colorless. AO triggers, Charles looks at the top seven and puts Ranger Captain of Eos and Claws of Gix onto the battlefield. Ranger Captain triggers, and Charles fetches up Sarah Ascendant into his hand. He casts Sarah Ascendant. He activates Karn's first ability, targeting Cal's Jewel Lotus, killing it. Finished up, Charles passes. Garner draws and casts a Lotus Battle. He moves to combat, Ryan pleased with the table again about Karn, and Garner declares his attacks. He attacks Ryan with Dwarven Grunt and Cal with Ancient Copper Dragon. Ryan sighs, they both take it, and Copper Dragon triggers. Garner rolls a 13 and creates 13 treasures. All through, Garner gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and casts an Arcane Signet. He passes. Cal draws and plays a Gemstone Caverns. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help recast his commander, Malcolm. Cal ends his turn. Charles draws and plays a Snow-Covered Plains. He activates Karn's first ability, targeting his own Arcane Signet. He taps it for white, then sacks it to Ashnod's, adding two colorless. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help recast his commander, Ao. He sacrifices it to Ashnod's, moving to the Command Zone. Owl triggers, Charles looks at the top seven, putting Stoneforge Mystic and Bounty Agent onto the battlefield. Stoneforge triggers, and Charles fetches up a Nim Death Mantle into his hand. Next, Charles sacrifices Stoneforge Mystic to Ashnod's and casts Nim Death Mantle. He sacrifices Sarah Ascendant, Bounty Agent, and Ranger Captain to Ashnod's and recasts his commander, Ao. He sacrifices Uwu to Ashnod's, Nim Death Mantle, and Owl Trigger. Charles looks at the top seven, putting Land Tax and Archon of Ameria onto the battlefield. He then sacrifices Archon to Ashnod's and uses it to pay for Death Mantle's trigger, returning Ao to the battlefield. He sacks Uwu to Ashnod's again, Death Mantle, and Owl Trigger. Charles looks at the top seven, putting Jeweled Lotus, Grand Abolisher, and Phyrexian Revoker onto the battlefield. When Revoker enters, Charles names Professional Facebreaker. He then sacrifices the Revoker to Ashnod's, pays for Death Mantle, returning Al to the battlefield. He sacrifices Ao to Ashnod's, Death Mantle, and Al Trigger. Charles looks at the top seven, putting Spirit of the Labyrinth, Leon and Relic Warder, and Lion's Eye Diamond onto the battlefield. Relic Warder triggers, targeting Cal's Birthing Pod. Charles holds priority and sacrifices Relic Warder to Ashnod's, adding two colorless. Relic triggers again, returns nothing, then its original ETB resolves and permanently exiles Cal's birthing pod. Then Charles pays for Death Mantle and returns Al to the battlefield. 
He sacks Al to Ash Nods yet again. Death Mantle and AO Trigger. Charles looks at the top seven, putting Mox Opal, Soul Ring, Portable Hole, and Weathered Wayfarer onto the battlefield, and then Mox Diamond into the graveyard since he didn't discard a land. Portable Hole enters and exiles Ryan's Lion's Eye Diamond. Charles then taps his Soul Ring to pay for Death Mantle, returning Uwu to the battlefield. He sacrifices Al to Ash Nods, Death Mantle, and AO Trigger. Charles looks at the top seven, putting Ether Sworn Cannonist and Sanctifier in back onto the battlefield. Sanctifier enters and exiles all black and red cards from graveyards. Charles then sacrifices Sanctifier to Ash Nods, paying for Death Mantle, returning out to the battlefield. He ends his turn. Just kidding, he sacrifices out to Ash Nods. Death Mantle and AO Trigger. Charles looks at the top seven, putting Mim Knight, Cathar Commando, and Grim Monolith onto the battlefield. He taps his Monolith to help pay for Death Mantle, returning out to the battlefield. He sacrifices AO to Ash Nods. Death Mantle and Uwu Trigger. Charles looks at the top seven, putting Enduring Renewal and Mana Crypt onto the battlefield. He taps his Crypt to pay for Death Mantle, returning Al to the battlefield. Now with the pieces on the battlefield, Charles presents a loop. He sacrifices Mem Knight to Ash Nods, adding two colorless. Enduring Renewal triggers, and Charles returns Mem Knight to his hand. He recasts Mem Knight for zero. He repeats this loop over and over again, netting infinite colorless mana. With infinite mana, he can continually sacrifice and return Al to the battlefield, digging through his entire deck. He can then put every non-land permanent with mana value 4 or less onto the battlefield. Through one of his AO loops, he puts Walking Ballista onto the battlefield. It enters as a 0-0 and dies immediately. Enduring Renewal triggers and Charles returns it to his hand. He then uses his infinite mana to help cast Walking Ballista where X equals 69,420. He activates Walking Ballista, machine guns the entire table, and Charles wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fantastic set of games tonight. Congrats to Garner and Charles on their wins. In game one, Garner's perfect timing of Dockside Extortionist gave him the gas he needed to go for the win. It was his knowledge of his deck, however, that helped him execute it in such a quick and precise fashion. In game two, Charles' turn two Karn was absolutely devastating for the rest of the table. Charles leveraged the table's greed to keep Karn on the battlefield, pulled out in front, and then close out the game with expertise and a bit of pizzazz. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.